Okay, that's right. You can see in today's video, we are going to go over an explanation of nuclear fusion. And that's right. That is our sun. And it is nuclear fusion that powers our sun and all of the stars. And indeed, we say that nuclear fusion is the reason the sun actually shines. So let's just see what is nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a reaction in which two or more lighter atomic nuclei combine to form a heavier atomic nucleus. Energy is released, and sometimes also some atomic particles are released in that process. And that's right, like I said before, that is our sun. It's nuclear fusion that powers our sun. It's that release of energy, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And actually, in the core of the sun, the sun is every second fusing more than 600 metric tons of hydrogen into helium and the heavier elements that we know. In fact, that's right, it is fusion that powers the stars, and it is fusion that has produced basically all of the elements that we know. There are some man-made elements that we have on the periodic table 1 through uranium number 92. Okay, so let's go through and talk about a little bit more in detail what fusion actually is. Goodbye, sun. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take two lighter atomic nuclei. Let's just say we'll take the lightest ones possible, basically, which is a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen atom, a hydrogen one. Hydrogen one is basically one proton and no neutron, so it's hydrogen one. Has an atomic number of one and a mass number of one. And, of course, we could say it's a hydrogen atom, and we could say we have an electron, but we're not talking about electrons. We're talking about nuclear fusion, so we're just going to concentrate here on these two protons, and we'll say those are the nuclei of our hydrogen atoms. Okay, now we're going to try to bring those hydrogen atoms very close together. And when we do that, we're going to encounter something because those are both positively charged particles, and they are going to, of course, feel a force of repulsion. That force of repulsion we call the Coulomb force or the electric force. But we want to fuse those two atoms, those two uh, protons together, and that means we need to get them really close. And how do we get them really close? Well, we have to have that occur at a place where there's a very high temperature and also a lot of pressure. And that occurs, as you know now, on stars like our sun. Our sun is just a plain old yellow star. But we bring them closer together, and they will stick together. Well, how close do we have to get them? Well, we have to get them so they at, are at a distance less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And when we bring them that close, not too close, but when we bring them that close, then a new force, not necessarily a new force, but then another force will take over, and that will be the strong nuclear force. And it's called the strong nuclear force because actually it's pretty strong and occurs there in the nucleus, and it's stronger than the electric force, which is the repulsive force between those two like-charged particles. And therefore, it's a strong nuclear force. And if we get them really close, that nuclear force is actually a force of attraction. All right? And it's a force of attraction. And when that occurs, we also said that some energy is released. And it's that energy, that release of energy that is powering the sun and powers uh, the stars. Well, where does that energy come from? Well, this is one of the most interesting things about the whole thing. The energy comes from the fact that the mass of the nucleus, we have two protons attached together here in the nucleus, the mass of that nucleus is less than the sum of the masses of those individual constituents or those individual protons. So if we took the mass of the protons before and we compared that to the mass of the nucleus when they're combined there in the nucleus, we find the mass of those two particles, the mass of that individual nucleus, is less than the mass of those two individual protons. That mass difference we call the mass defect. There's some mass that is defect, some mass that's missing, so to speak, and that mass has been converted into energy. So there's an energy equivalent through Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared, and we call that energy the binding energy. So really the mass defect and the binding energy are the same thing. In one way, we can kind of talk about it as a mass, and then we can convert that mass through this nice equation into binding energy. But it's the same thing, just 
different units. Okay, and we're actually going to go through now for a simple nuclear equation, nuclear re reaction, and we're going to calculate and determine the mass defect and convert that into the binding energy. And we're going to do that for this equation where we have hydrogen 2 plus hydrogen 2. We have a deuterium and a deuterium. And they are going to fuse together, and we're going to get out of that a hydrogen 3, which is a tritium, and a hydrogen 1 we call a hydrogen atom or a proteum. Okay, sometimes you'll actually see in this kind of reaction, you'll see a D here and a D here. There's no element D. It's just they use D because it's a common way we talk about hydrogen, common isotope of hydrogen, deuterium, deuterium, and then you'll see a T here for tritium. But this is hydrogen 2, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3, and hydrogen 1. And we are just going to add up the masses on the left-hand side and the masses on the right-hand side. And hopefully the mass on the right-hand side, after those have been fused together, although we do get a proton, excuse me, a hydrogen out of that, okay, we're going to look up the mass of those atoms. Now, usually it's given with the electrons, okay? Because we don't really change the number of electrons, but we give it with the electrons. You, what you do is you go to the internet, you look in the textbook, you look in the appendix, and you just look up the mass of hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 2, and that's the mass 2.014102. And this is hydrogen 3, and this is the mass of hydrogen 3, and this is just the mass of hydrogen atom with, each of these is with the one electron. Now, sometimes you'll look these up in the book and they'll be a little bit different depending on how many digits they're carried out to and how they're rounded. But I think most commonly you see five or six numbers after the decimal, and I think these are the most common values that you'll see. So now we're going to add up the ones on the left, and we're going to add up the masses on the right, and you'll see that this is 4.028204 unified atomic mass units. When we're talking about nuclear reactions, we're talking about binding energy and a mass defect, we usually express the mass in unified atomic mass units. Okay, and you see we have 4.028, here we have 4.023, and this is less. Now you might say, well, those are basically the same. Well, they are kind of basically the same, but they're not really the same. There's a small difference in mass, the difference in mass being the mass defect, and that mass defect through Einstein's equation can actually come out to be a significant amount of energy, the energy that powers our sun and all the stars. Okay, so here is the mass defect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that mass defect using Einstein's equation, and we can convert that into uh, binding energy in elect in mega electron volts. I'm going to do this one way the long way and one way the short way because it's interesting to see how many kilograms it is also. You could be asked that. This is the mass defect in unified atomic mass units. That's what the U is for, unified atomic mass units. We know that one unified atomic mass units is this number of ki kilograms, and so that becomes 7.19 times 10 to the minus 30 kilograms. These are basically the same thing. This is just expressed in different units, okay? Centimeters, meters, you know, whatever you want to do. They're different units, but it's the same amount of mass. Now you can convert that using Einstein's equation into energy, okay? Here's our mass, the speed of light squared. Don't forget to square the speed of light. And you get 6.47 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. Joules is a form of energy, but like I said, by convention, we usually express it in mega electron volts or electron volts, this time mega, and that means that you just know that one electron volt, these are just a, a conversion constant, is one, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, divide this by this, and you get four, you on your calculator, you'll get something with six, uh, numbers after here, and I just converted this into mega electron volts, okay? It's 404 million electron volts, which is 4.04. .04. That's not quite right, but this, this is a mega electron volts, all right? So it would be a zero and then three num more numbers after here, something like that. Okay, so that is the number of mega electron volts. And I just want to point out again that these four numbers are basically all kind of the same thing, converted through this equation, energy to mass. This is a mass, this is a mass. This is an energy, and this is an energy. Same energies, same masses, and then converted through Einstein's equation. Now, we can do that conversion a little bit more quickly from the um, unified atomic mass units directly to the mega electron volts because we know that we can convert from our unified atomic mass units, which is our mass defect, through the conversion factor that one unified atomic mass unit is equal to 931.49 mega electron volts. 
And basically, of course, we get basically the same answer. We get 4.03. If you do that straight across like that, you get 4.03, which is basically 4.04, .04, which has to do with the difference that we have in rounding. Okay? So there you go. That's how you can convert from the mass in unified atomic units directly to the mega electrons. Well, I want to just, before we go, don't hang up yet. I want to point out one uh, very interesting thing because what do all these numbers mean, really? Well, basically, one interesting thing about nuclear reactions is that nuclear fusion is a very energy-dense reaction. The binding energy, the energy that's released, the energy that's con the mass that's converted into energy gives us 4.04 .04 mega electron volts. Now you might say, oh, 4.04. .04. That's not really that much energy. 4.04 .04 is not that big of a number, but it is mega electron volts. Okay, so it's 4.04 .04 million electron volts. But let's just compare that to like a chemical reaction. This is a nuclear reaction. This is a chemical reaction. If we take one hydrogen atom and we add an electron to a hydrogen atom, then we get 13.6 electron volts. Okay, it takes 13.6 electron volts to do that. And remember that from your hydrogen energy level diagram that that's 13.6 electron volts. Now, 13.6 is more than 4.4, .4, but this is mega so if you take this mega electron volts and divide it by this regular old electron volts, you'll find out that the energy difference in those two reactions, this fusion reaction and this chemical reaction, there's almost 300,000 times more energy is released in one nuclear. This is just for one nuclear reaction. Remember, the sun is doing that more than, uh, no, converts more than 600 metric tons of hydrogen into those kinds of reactions every second, okay? So it's a lot of energy, and nuclear reactions tend to be much more energy dense than chemical reactions. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Please subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this video. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.